So when Recur, we set out to improve the landscape for patients and clinicians, A, by identifying the best regimen so we could advise patients to have that first when they progressed, B, if there was little to choose between the regimens, at least to collect data on comparative toxicity so patients could use that to help them choose. And C, probably most importantly for the future, to identify the best backbone that we can then add novel drugs to, either um, based on uh, its efficacy or based on the toxicity profile of the new drug and the backbone. So we compared the four most commonly used regimens in the time at Europe, and they were topatec and cyclophosphamide, irinotec and temozolomide, gemcitabine, docetaxel, and high dose ifosfamide. And even within those regimens, there were several different dosing schedules that were used. So we agreed a standard dosing schedule for each. So having done that, we have now for the first time produced randomized evidence of activity and toxicity between the regimens. Importantly, 85% of our patients have been recruited to the trial early in the course of their disease progression. So they either have refractory disease uh, on first line treatment or they're on their first recurrence. And this proportion is similar across all the arms. And it means that the results of this study are relevant for patients at the point of their first progression when they potentially have the most to be gained from being on the most effective regimen. In the comparison that we're presenting at ASCO this year, given the observed data, ifosfamide is better than the topocyclo arm for EFS, OS, and imaging response. So there's a 96% likelihood that IFOS is better than topocyclo for EFS, a 94% likelihood that it's better for overall survival, and an 88% likelihood that it's better for imaging response. In terms of median OFS, that equates to a two months difference in median EFS, so 5.7 months versus 3.7 months, and just over six months uh, better overall survival, so 16.8 months versus 10.4 months. When we set the trial up, we knew that the ifosfamide regimen was very myelotoxic and it had a significant risk of neutropenic infections and also a risk of renal toxicity and neurotoxicity. We also knew that irinotec and temozolomide was much more likely to cause diarrhea, but these risks were not well understood in terms of the proportion of patients affected or how different the regimens were. So if we look at the direct topocyclo ifosfamide comparison, ifosfamide patients had more grade three, four toxicity overall than in topocyclo, so 57 versus 44% and more grade three to four SAE, so 28% versus 12%. One of the interesting findings was that the incidence of febrile neutropenia was pretty much identical between topocyclo and ifosfamide. Not surprisingly, the ifosfamide patients were more likely to have renal toxicity or encephalopathy of grade three or greater, and it was 7% for both versus 0% in the topocyclo arm. Looking more broadly than the patients who were directly randomized between topocyclo and ifosfamide, when we examined all patients uh, recruited to the other randomizations, the proportion with grade three, four or five uh, toxicity was similar between uh, the patients recruited to topocyclo, ifosfamide and erinticontemazolamide, and slightly lower the, in the patients recruited to their gemcitabine docetaxel arm. And the most common grade three plus toxicities across the study were myelosuppression, febrile neutropenia, infections, and gastrointestinal toxicity. Uh, and actually the majority of the gastrointestinal toxicity was in patients recruited to the irinotec and temozolomide arm. Uh, just over a third of patients had grade three plus toxicity, uh, which equates to over seven stools a day. I should also make the point that there are still open questions about the relative efficacy of topocyclo, irinotec and temozolomide and ifosfamide based on the data we have. According to the rules of the study, we had to drop an arm after 50 and another after 75 patients. And as I've said, that was very much a pragmatic decision because the patient numbers are not huge. But the difference between these three best performing arms is slight and certainly the irinotec and temozolomide arm was dropped at a point where had we had a more abundant population, we would ideally have continued to recruit. 
Um, it's unlikely that we would reintroduce the Arinatik and Timus Alamai Dharma to recur, but we must recognize that we've only partially answered the question as to how large the differences are between Arinatik and Timus Alamide topo cyclo and between Arinatik and Timus Alamide and Iphosamide. And at the point that the Arinatik and Timus Alamide arm was dropped, the number of patients in the comparison between that and Iphosamide was particularly small, only 40 patients in each arm. The main legacies of the trial, whether we bring in additional arms or not, are that for the first time we've randomised evidence of efficacy and toxicity for patients and clinicians, which is really a huge, huge step forwards from our position before the trial started. Mm -hmm.